Hi guys, welcome, welcome. This is Genomics with Georgia. Today is all about how do you get started in transitioning over to the dark side, the computational biology side. Sit down, grab a drink, do whatever you want and get ready to learn how you're gonna get started and join me in Genomics with Georgia. My name is Georgia, I work as a genomic data scientist in Cambridge UK where I have been for the past nearly two years now. I had an undergraduate degree in molecular biology and genetics in 2020, I did a bioinformatics internship, taught myself how to code and now I work in genomic data science. This is my little space on the internet where I show you guys how you can go from taught wet lab biology, teach yourself how to code and land a job in genomic data science. In today's video I'm going to be talking to you guys about the hardest part of doing anything in life. My lipstick is always on my teeth. <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the hardest part of doing any task, which is starting the task. Starting the task is always the hardest thing. And when you've been in wet lab biology for so long, this whole world of bioinformatics just seems super confusing. Like, what is doing biology on computers when all you've known is being in the lab, doing the wet lab practicals? So today I'm just going to talk to you guys about how you begin. <laughs> so beginning learning bioinformatics and coding and genomic data science is hard. <laughs> it's, it's difficult because it's so daunting. Um, so one of the main questions I get asked a lot of the time is how did you start? Where did you where did you go? How did you know what to learn? What even should you be learning to transition into this field? And where did you do it in terms of your career? So from my personal experience, my undergraduate degree was just a wet lab degree um, in molecular biology and genetics. I started teaching myself how to code in my penultimate summer because um, I got rejected from an internship that I really wanted and they were like, hey Georgia, you seem really great, but you can't code, so no, which was totally fair enough because you can't teach someone to code in such a short space of time for this internship I didn't get, so it's all fine. I started teaching myself how to code and then by the time my third year came around, I could do a bioinformatics research project because I'd got these core fundamental skills. So today, today we're just going to focus on how do you start? And you might be coming from whether you're at an undergraduate level and you want to do a research project that's bioinformatics. Maybe you want to do a project alongside your degree. Maybe you've just finished up your master's and you haven't learned to code yet. Maybe you've done a solely wet lab PhD and you just kind of want to go in with a fresh view of what are the specific skills you need to land a role in this sector how to begin and i plan on doing a lot more content around where to go what tools to learn what platforms are the best where to find physicians etc etc that's all upcoming but today's video is how to start so my first thing i want to say is don't be scared i think a lot of the time people get really scared starting something because uh, either you think that you're gonna fail, you just don't know what's expected of you, you don't even know what the task and the problem entails. So it's very scary and I think the main thing I just want to say to people who are thinking about learning some bioinformatics and learning some coding for biology, you should. You should definitely do this as early as possible because the sooner you do this, the sooner you start learning and the sooner you start getting better. And one of the best things about coding is you start and something will take you a week and it seems so difficult, but then by the time next week, you can do that task in a second. So the rate at which you grow and develop, it's phenomenal and it's addictive and it's feel good. We had a ton of bioinformatics research projects in third year and people weren't choosing them. <laughs> the uni were having to drag people to these bioinformatics labs because everyone was so comfortable working in the wet labs. So it's scary, it's daunting, 
but you gotta do it. Don't be scared. My second kind of tip for getting started with coding for biology in your project that you're doing, like I said, whether that's with uni or on the side, the second tip is just to, before you even think about the coding and getting so overwhelmed with all of these scary new things you don't understand, go back to basics. What do you understand? Well, you probably understand the biology, as this is coding for biologists, but you're gonna understand the biology. So go to that first. Make sure that you understand the biology of the project you're doing, because I think it's really important to remember that coding for biology and bioinformatics and genomic data science, these are just ways of playing with the biological data. And there's a reason why our field exists separately to data science in different industries like finance and insurance and all that stuff that I don't particularly, I'm not particularly invested in. Um, our field exists in its own entity because of the context of what we're doing with the data. Um, and I think, so when we define data science in general, you've kind of got three key areas. If you look at a lot of graphs on Google images and what is data science. Um, when we define data science, we kind of think of it as having three sectors. So you've got your domain knowledge, which in non-biological context is usually business intelligence. And then you have your stats and your maths. And then you have your computer programming. So you've got these three things that make up data science. However, when we're doing it for genomics and biology, that domain expertise is actually your fundamental knowledge of biology and genomics. And this is such a core part of doing this well, because there's no point having data if you can't interpret it in light of the biology. So go back to your basics, do what you know, make sure that you understand the biology of the problem that you're applying these data heavy tools to. And if you can nail that bit, then you're gonna nail the rest. <laughs> okay, so tip number three, you're starting off on your bioinformatics, genomic data science project, you've started, <laughs> you've understood the biology, now what? So now what you need to do is you need to go and learn the fundamental basics of coding. <laughs> So when we say coding, this is scary, this is daunting, and I'm gonna speak so much more about loads to do with coding and programming and languages and etc. But at this point, at the beginning of your journey, all you need to learn is the basics, okay? Just the basics. So first of all, you need to learn some bash. Bash is your best friend. <laughs> um, bash is your best friend. So in order to work with files and data and tools and technologies, a lot of the time we do things at the command line. So in order to use the command line, you're gonna to need to learn some bash. And this is because a lot of the time in genomic data science and bioinformatics, the files are huge, <laughs> they're so big, and you can't just manipulate them easily in a graphical user interface. It's just so much easier at a command line. And a command line basically just allows you to talk directly to the computer rather than having that visual in front of you that you have to click and move the mouse. And it actually just takes more time. <laughs> when, when you're kind of starting to learn, you think, oh, why can't I just drag and drop and click it? It'd be so much easier. But then when you learn to talk very simply to the computer, it actually makes your life so much easier. So yes, you want to go ahead and learn just basic command line, just basic, just stuff so you can change your directory, print your working directory, list what's in it, do some copying. And this sounds super basic. And this is a theme that we're gonna learn about in this channel. So these things seem so basic and that makes it really difficult to learn because you get so frustrated, right? Like, this is so simple. Why is it taking me so long to figure out? But um, you need to learn the fundamentals of the command line so you can actually use and interact with your file types. Uh, so another few things you probably want to learn in terms of the coding. And like I said, at this point, it's just the basics. Don't get scared. It's just the basics. So one of the main languages that blah, 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 blah. <laughs> one of the main languages that bioinformatics tools are written in is R. So from my personal experience, 
uh, some of the packages I used in my projects, my first junior projects in bioinformatics, um, they were written in R. So I had to learn to use R in order to use these tools. Um, so I worked with Bioconductor, which has a ton of bioinformatics project there, there. Bioconductor, which has a ton of bioinformatics tools written in R. However, this is my personal opinion and correct me, well not correct me, I mean, just say if you disagree, um, but R is is I don't like it, <laughs> I just don't like it. Um, so I prefer to, I'm happy to run these programs in R because obviously that's the only choice for some of them. But then I prefer to analyze, well, mm, I prefer to wrangle and analyze and visualize my data in Python. <laughs> Hence why my cat was called Monty Python. Um, so I prefer to use Python uh, for the actual data analysis and science after you get the outputs from your bioinformatics packages. Um, so from my personal recommendations, go some basic command line, basic R, and then some basic Python. Um, and if you kind of have these three things, these three tools, um, these three languages under your belt, just at a very, very basic level, it's going to set you up very nicely for progressing through the bioinformatics and coding biology journey, yes. So, you have started, you have understood the biology, you've got some basic coding abilities, now what do you do? Well, this is now my favourite part of starting your bioinformatics journey and this is the point where you are gonna go and talk to people. <gasps> Scary, right? Human communication, God, no. But this is one of the most important things you can do for yourself when you're going on this journey. Because if you go on a journey in isolation, you're gonna waste time, you're gonna be unmotivated. Well, I'm presuming you might be. <laughs> you could be unmotivated. Uh, you could be struggling and wasting time and uninspired and just missing out on potential opportunities. So I have two paths to suggest for this point. So first of all, you wanna communicate with people around you in your environment. So if you're doing a project in a lab, talk to that person in the next desk, talk to their friend at lunch, like just get to know people in that environment. It's so, so valuable because these are the people that can potentially champion you when you're wanting to use these skills you learn in your further career um because one of the main mistakes i made and yeah listen out for my mistakes um when i did my first bioinformatics research project i was at the Earlham institute i was having such a good time i was so engrossed in the the problem and the biology and the learning to code that i didn't I barely communicated with anyone in the lab for ages. <laughs> like these people are sat all around me and I'd be sat at my computer and I was, I was struggling so much. I'd spend days trying to write like three lines of code to do this thing that I pictured in my head. And there would be, well, yeah, that there was someone there, someone there, someone there who could have told me the answer and I wouldn't have wasted all of that time. I just sat on my computer like, hey, I don't wanna ask these people for help because then they'll think I don't know what I'm doing. Well, hey, shock horror, if you're starting something new, you probably don't know what you're doing. So it's totally okay to talk and ask questions. If you've got a supervisor, ask them questions, ask them for help, chat to them about their job and why they got into it and just use this as an opportunity to get inspired, meet people, learn about the different opportunities within this field. I for one didn't even know what genomic data science was when I first was doing my bioinformatics internship, whereas now I live it and I breathe it and I love it and I'm going to speak about it so much here, but you just need to talk to people. So first and foremost, you've got to talk to those people who are in your environment. And then second of all, and this is a very important one for, I, I just think any part of your life, but especially when you're first starting out. You wanna get on your social medias, guys, okay? I 
Twitter is awesome for science. You've got so many people on Twitter tweeting about coding, bioinformatics, data science, Python, R, Bash, like it's all there being tweeted by very, very intelligent people. So it's just such an awesome environment to be in because yeah, you're doom scrolling, you know, and like you're wasting your time and you think this is a waste of your hours of your day, but it's just constant exposure to terminology that you're not familiar with yet. So I highly recommend getting on Twitter and following a load of people within the field. Um, and then second of all is LinkedIn. So really, really important, even if you're at the beginning of your career and all you have to put on your LinkedIn is that BSc from a uni, that is fine. Just get on there, start putting down your skills, start doing some online courses, start bulking up that profile, connect with your peers and start to grow your network as soon as possible because it will be so important for you when you start to spend more time in your field and you wanna grow and you wanna connect with people and you wanna find opportunities. I mean, I found my job on LinkedIn. <laughs> Get on LinkedIn, start building a presence for yourself. Also, LinkedIn is a great way as well to look at other people who are in jobs that you might wanna be in and you can see what skills they have. Where did they learn their skills? Do they have a master's? Do they have a PhD? Do they just do a course on Code Academy? Like you can just see this stuff for free on the internet. It's amazing. So get on the socials, get connected and start to believe that you are a part of this community as everybody else is. Today, we've gone through the fact that you need to just start. Don't be scared, just start. And it's all gonna be so much fun from here on in. Second, the biology. You know the biology. Go and get familiar with it. Talk to your supervisor about the problem. Talk to your peers about the problem. Go read the papers. Consume yourself in the biology of the problem because data means nothing without context. So learn that biology, absorb it, get your domain knowledge to be 10 out of 10. Um, third, you're gonna learn some basic coding. Like I said, basic. Best friend is Bash, and then you wanna go for some R and Python, and we'll talk more soon about where you're gonna to go to learn those skills. And then fourth is connecting. Connect with real humans in real life, talk to them, get their help, get their advice, and then get online. Get connected, get networking, and build that online presence. Absorb yourself into the field, and my friends, you are going to be a <laughs> there. You can do it, you belong here. Let's all go on this journey together and we are gonna nail data science for genomics. So I've been Georgia, this is Genomics with Georgia and until next time.